Hey everyone, I'm TJ Van Toel from the Kenda React team, and today we're going to take a look at the Kenda React data grid. The data grid is our single most popular component, mostly because it, well, it does a whole lot. In its most basic form, the data grid provides an elegant way of displaying data and letting users operate on that data. But there's so much more you can do from there, from adding features like paging, filtering, and sorting, to PDF and Excel exporting, and even accessibility is all Kenda React components, including the data grid, conform to numerous accessibility standards. In this video, we'll look at how to get started with the data grid, how to add a theme, and how to implement a few of the more common features, like paging and filtering. All right, let's move this to the side. And what you're looking at now is my development environment, where I have a newly created React app that you can see is kind of simple. Now to use the data grid, you'll first need to install the grid's NPM package and its dependencies, which you can get from going to the grid's getting started page, which is gonna be on kenderreact.com. And then if you click docs and demos, and then data grid, and getting started is going to be right down here in the sidebar. Scroll down and you'll find the command, the NPM command that you'll need to run. So I'll do that and paste this in here. Now next, while this is running, you'll also need to install one of Kenda React's three themes, which you can find if you scroll down to the styling and themes section on the documentation. And we can just go to overview and you'll see the three themes. I personally happen to be a fan of the material theme, so I will go ahead and do that. I'll need to install this from NPM as well, so I'll do that. And I'll also need to grab this Roboto font from Google also. So I'm going to grab that and I will toss this in my HTML so I have that ready to go as well. And that's the extent of the setup. So let's go ahead and start this app up. And we'll also switch over to, while this is starting up, switch over to the app source code. And that's super exciting, but that's the extent of our setup. So at this point, we're ready to go ahead and start developing with the data grid. And so the first thing we'll need to do is actually import it. So I'm going to grab that and import it from the Kendo React Grid NPM package. And I'm also going to need that theme that we installed as well. So we installed the Kendo material theme. So I'm going to bring that in also. You'll see that I have some sample data in this app already, which is a data set I found that's actually a collection of bike stations in the city of Toronto. And there are a surprising number of them. So it actually works pretty well for demoing out a data grid. And to show this data, actually, all I need to do is go down to my markup and type in grid and type it correctly and point the data at my data set, which in this case is going to be bike stations. And it works, but you'll see it's also kind of messy because by default, the grid is just going to take every single field in this JSON file and throw it in a column, which is usually not what you want. Uh, normally, what you're going to want to do is pick out individual fields out of the JSON, give these things nice labels, put them in an order that you want to display to the user. And that's where this grid column component comes into play. So I'm going to paste in a little bit of code that takes a grid column for the fields that I'm interested in. So these field properties correspond to properties of items in my JSON file. And the title is going to basically give a title for the column that when I refresh shows up here on the top of the screen. And you'll see that in the browser, once that refreshes, I get a pretty nice looking grid there before I do any additional uh, configuration, which is really pretty powerful. But I am going to have to customize this a bit. As first of all, this data set is quite large. Like I said, there is a surprising number of bike, <laughs> bike stations in the city of Toronto. So I'm going to want to add some paging and filtering for my users. And I also want to do some customization on what the user sees. For example, typically you don't want to show true or false in a column. It's not the most user friendly thing. Maybe you want to show yes or no or some sort of icon or whatnot. And actually, let's tackle that problem first. Now, even though this starting API for the grid is quite simple, uh, that's kind of the appeal of using this approach, Kendo React lets you configure just about anything you see about this grid. And for columns, one thing you can do is pass a cell prop in. And so I'm going to do that. And this is going to give me the ability to do some custom rendering. 
So I'm going to create a new component that's called Boolean cell. And I'll head up here and paste in an implementation of that cell that's just going to return a cell with a hard-coded emoji. And you'll see that as soon as I save this, I see my custom rendered cell in the grid. Now, I do want this cell to render based off my data and not show a, a hard-coded wave here. And for that, Kendra React provides some information in the props for this component. The first of these is a attribute called data item, which is going to have the full bike station information. So essentially, it's the whole bike station op uh, object from the JSON file, as well as a field prop, which in this case, since I'm using it for the is charging station field, is going to be, well, is charging station. So what I want to do in this Boolean cell is say, OK, take the full data item or the full bike station and grab the specific property that is the props.field. So in this case, that'll be is charging station. And that's going to be either true or false. It's a Boolean field. So if it's true, I will show a, not a green book, one a green check mark. We'll be hipster and use some emoji here. And if it's false, we'll go ahead and display a red X. And you'll see when I say this, I get a far more user-friendly display. And since this component is written in a reusable way, I just wrote it as Boolean cell. If I had other Boolean fields that I wanted to display, I've got a nice little reusable component here I can use throughout really any grids that I want to use throughout my app or uh, perhaps even my organization. The cool thing about this approach in general is you have total control over the rendering. So you can do pretty much whatever. There are also extensibility APIs in the grid for these header cells in case you wanted to do custom over here. You can also add footer cells as well. And speaking of footer cells, the footer of our table, uh, we can't even see it. It's way down here. So as a next feature, let's look at how to add paging. To implement paging, Kendra React requires a few new props, the first of which is going to be pageable, which let's go ahead and set that to true. You'll also need to name to pass two props named skip and take, which we'll talk about here in a minute. On page change, which is going to be an event that we'll implement in a minute as well. And total, which Kendra React is going to need to know the total size or the total number of rows in your data set. And this one we actually already have. It's just going to be bike stations.length. All right, so now let's talk about skip and take. And to do that, I'm going to introduce two new state variables with a React hook. I'll paste them in here, one for skip and one for take. Now, skip, as its name sort of implies, tells the grid how many data items are being skipped. By default, we want this to be set to zero, as on first render, we want to skip zero items and show the very first item in the list. But as the user begins to interact with the grid, we'll start uh, messing with this number and bumping it up. Take is essentially a page size, which we'll set to 10, as that seems pretty reasonable for this data set, but something that you might want to tweak. So now that we have these state variables, let's go ahead and pass those in. The last change we need to make to actually see this in our browser is to the data itself. So right now, we're passing in the full list of bike stations. And instead, we're going to need to tweak this to show only the bike stations within this paging range. And to do that, we'll go ahead and slice this array. We'll start at however many items need to be skipped and end at the skip plus the page size, which is going to be skip plus take. So in the first pass, these values will be 0 and 10. But as these values update as the user interacts with the grid, the syntax ensures we're slicing out the correct bike stations. And you'll see over here in the browser, if you were looking over there, that we're now correctly seeing only 10 stations, which is great. But you'll also notice that the paging actually isn't working quite yet. And that's because we haven't implemented this on page change function. So let's go ahead and do that. Create a new function. We'll name it on page change. And I'll go ahead and paste in a little implementation for that up here. This function gets an event that contains both the new take and skip values. And really, all we need to do is set those values so that they get re-rendered by React. And as soon as we do that, you'll see that we now have a complete paging implementation. Now, I should mention, for this example, I'm using a local data set. Basically, all of my bike stations are, are here available locally. But oftentimes, for situations like this, your data is going to live somewhere on a server or a database. 
In those situations, this onPageChange function can serve as a place for you to make a backend call to get the data you need. You'll be able to pass the new skip and take values to your server, get back the data you need, and set that data for the grid to display. At this point, our grid is far more user-friendly. We're not showing a giant list. Users can sort of peruse through this. But one feature I think would be really useful in a grid like this is filtering. So if, if I actually wanted to view bike stations in Toronto, I might want to filter to only see stations where bikes are available, or maybe where bikes are available in the zone I happen to be living in, or that have a charging station available. So with that in mind, the last feature I want to show you today is how to filter data using the Kendo React grid. And to do that, I'm actually going to go ahead and clear out what we have so far, because we're going to take a slightly different approach. Because the operations you might want to do on a grid can get fairly complex in the real world, the Kendo React grid offers a few functions to help you manage that complexity. What I'm going to do is add two new state variables to this example, and that's data state and result, where data state tracks the state of the grid itself. So think things like the current page, any filters the user might be trying to apply, and so on. And results stores the data itself after those filters are applied. Now, this is a little easier to understand when you see it in action. So let's use this approach to implement filtering. Like paging, filtering requires you to pass in a Boolean prop, in this case, filterable. Let's do that and set that to true. And we also need an event handler. So this time, let's pass in on data state change. So remember, data state is going to be the state of the grid itself. And whenever that state changes, we'll implement a on data, which by default, we'll use this function. This event includes the updated data set, which remember one more time is the state of the grid itself. So if the user applies any filters, this essentially ensures that those filters are preserved. But to get the result, you'll have to apply the various filters to the data set itself. For example, if the data state comes back that the user wants to filter all stations where bikes are available, or bikes available is greater than zero, you have to apply that filter to get the appropriate data to set in this result variable. If your data is on the server, you can take this data state and send it there and do your filtering and return the appropriate data. If you're doing this filtering on the client though, Kendo React provides a helper function called process, which I'll go ahead and hit up here and import. And the way it works is you pass it the raw data. So I'm gonna set the result, AKA the data that I want to show. And I'll set the result to the process function and I'm passing it the raw data. So I'm basically saying, take all of the bike stations, run it through the data set or incorporate all filtering changes and whatnot and return the result. And at this point, the filter implementation is basically done. All we need to do is set the full list of bike stations as the initial set of results. And I also need to take this data state and destructure it into the grid to ensure that any filtering or say like paging and such the user does gets preserved. And when I save this, you'll see that the user is now able to filter data with these built-in filters. Oh, the last thing I need to do is our data is not now not the full list of bike stations. It's actually going to be the result of applying those filters. So when I save this, I have these filters that Kendo React provides for us. And you'll see that I'm now able to just type in these fields. I can say uh, I might want to see all bikes or all stations where there are bikes available and maybe in the uh, north zone as well. You can see there's only one station that has bikes available in the north. So you can see how helpful this would be for a user and how easy Kendo React makes it to implement this functionality. Before we wrap up today, the last thing I want to do is actually add back in our paging code using this new data state approach. First, I'll again have to pass in the pageable and total props. So I'll set pageable to true. And our total is going to again be the bike stations length. So those values have to return. Next, I'm going to again need to provide the skip and take values, which are actually going to be a part of the data state or the grid state. So I'll set skip to zero again and take to 10 again up here. And finally, instead of just passing in bike stations as the initial set of results, 
I'll need to run process on these values, process the bike stations through the data set state, which is going to ensure that the first time this app renders, it's going to take the skip and take values into effect. And when I save that, you'll see that our app again has functional paging in addition to, in addition to the filtering we added as well. And we didn't even have to manually add skip and take as props to the grid manually because they're going to get destructured in using this line of code here. And this is the real power of using this data state based approach. It makes handling complexity easier, especially as you get into these more complex and real world use cases. Hopefully this video gave you an idea of just how powerful the Kender React data grid is. In just a handful of minutes and a few dozen lines of code, we were able to build a powerful UI for our users to view and work with data. And as I've mentioned several times now, we really are just scratching the surface of what's possible. To learn more, I'd highly encourage you to browse the demos on the Kender React Data Grid site, as you can find fully functional examples on features we didn't have time to cover today, like editing, grouping, exporting, and more. If any of those features interest you, let us know in the comments and we might cover them in a future video. Now, the data grid is just one of the 80 plus UI components in Kender React. If you want to give the grid and the other components in Kender React a shot, go ahead and click this button to start a free 30 day trial of Kender React. During your trial, you can use our entire suite of UI components and access our dedicated support resources as well. Stay tuned for future videos in this series, but for now, give Kender React a shot and let us know what you think.